Hi everyone, this is Frank from YOLO Live. Today we're diving into the biggest update in YOLO Box Extreme, the fully rebuilt replay feature. The biggest highlight of the 2.0.3 update is definitely the complete rebuild of the replay feature. Compared to the old version, the new replay focuses on three key improvements, more precise control options, smoother operation logic, and more efficient functionality. To help you quickly understand and get a handle on the rebuilt replay, I'm going to walk you through it step by step following the actual workflow. No more talking, let's dive in. The replay feature is mainly divided into two sections, the replay main interface and replay settings. Before turning on and controlling replay during a live event, it's always a good idea to first go into replay settings and fine tune the parameters. This way, we can make sure the replay looks exactly the way we want. At first glance, all these settings might seem a bit overwhelming. But actually, they can be roughly divided into four main sections. Main control, operation preferences, replay content settings, and visual design. Main control is where everything begins. You can turn replay on and pick your source. Then comes operation preferences. This part is all about how you want to interact with replay help you shape the workflow that fits your habits best. Replay content settings defines what your audience will see. And finally, visual design. This is where function meets style. You can customize replay logos, intros, and outros, making every highlight feel consistent and on brand. So instead of thinking of replay settings as a long list of controls, Think of it as four clear spaces, each designed to help you create replays that are smoother, smarter, and uniquely yours. In previous versions, once you finished adjusting your parameters and settings, you had to go back to the main replay interface to enable replay, which was pretty inconvenient if you wanted to start replays right after setting them up. Now, in version 2.0.3, we've added a replay toggle switch right at the top of the replay settings page, also, since selecting a replay source is part of replay configuration, we've moved the selected replay source option into the replay settings page as well. Next, let's talk about operation preferences. If you often forget to activate replay after setting parameters, I recommend changing the replay button display option to display when replay on. This way, the replay record button will only appear once replay is activated, helping you avoid mistakes. Replay video duration is straightforward. It sets how long each replay clip will be, but if you can't predict the clip length in advance, you can enable the in-out mark feature. After turning on the in-out mark function button in replay settings, you'll see buttons appear to the left of the replay button on the top bar. Tap in to start recording the clip. The button will switch to out while counting, and when you tap out again, recording stops. Your new replay clip will then show up right away on the main replay page. If your workflow relies on quickly playing back the latest replay, you can also enable the play last function button. This adds a dedicated play last button right next to the replay playback icon, letting you instantly play the most recent clip for a smooth and fast workflow. For those who prefer a clean and efficient replay workflow, without too many advanced design elements or multiple sources, these settings alone might be all you need. For users who want more precise replay design and control, we've added the brand new tag feature. You can now create, rename, or delete up to three tag folders with at least one always present. Here's how it works. Once a replay group has been generated, you'll see your tag folders displayed on the right side of the replay list. They start out empty, so the orange number next to each folder shows zero. In each replay group, you'll also see tag icons with stars next to them. Tap a star and you'll see the orange number in the corresponding folder increase to one open the folder and you'll find the replay group inside. You can even star multiple folders at once, adding the same replay group to several tags simultaneously. Moving on to content settings, the familiar options like replay volume, mute, and replay mode preference are still here. What's new is Replay Encoding Settings. Tap this and you'll be taken to the Shared Streaming and Recording Encoding page where you can adjust resolution, FPS, bitrate, encode format, and encode type. 
When you're done, just tap the replay icon at the bottom menu to return to replay settings. Overall, compared to the old version that displayed everything in plain text, version 2.0.3 has completely revamped the replay logo, intro, and outro settings with a visual interface, making it much easier for you to identify and manage your video and image assets. Let's start with the replay logo settings. In version 2.0.3, in addition to allowing you to add your own custom replay logo, we've also included eight built-in replay logo presets for you to use. Just tap edit on the first tile in the replay logo list to open the replay logo preset library. If you find creating your own replay logo too time consuming, you can simply use one of our free presets. Just like replay logos in this new version, we're also giving you six free preset options for intros and outros. Again, just tap edit on the first image tile to access the preset library. If you choose one of the presets with a green screen background, you can adjust the similarity and smoothness to fine tune the chroma key effect and preview the final result. You can also upload your own custom intros and outros. Keep in mind though that in this version, there's a limit on the video length. You won't be able to add an intro or outro that's longer than five seconds. When you enable intro and outro playback, here's what will happen. After you tap the button to play a replay, the intro will play first over your program feed, then the replay content itself will play, and once you hit the stop button, it will switch back to the program feed and immediately play the outro over it. Now that I've configured all of my replay settings, we're ready to activate the replay feature and move on to the next stage, controlling and playing back our replays. Before starting a replay session, make sure the replay switch is turned on. In other words, the toggle here should be set to red. If you'd like your replays to play back in slow motion, you can select the desired playback speed under replay video speed. Right now, my replay list is still empty, so I need to generate a replay. There are two ways to do this, and you can choose whichever works best for you. The first option is to tap the replay button on the top taskbar. The system will automatically generate a replay group based on the parameters you've already set in replay settings. For example, you can see here that it created R1, which follows the settings I configured earlier, quick and convenient. If you'd like to capture your replay more precisely, tap the in button to the left of the replay button. This is what we introduced earlier as mark in. Once tapped, the system begins recording the portion you want to replay. The button will switch from in to out. When you're ready to stop recording, tap out again to set the end frame. After that, you'll see the captured replay clip appear in the replay list on the right. If your replay list contains a lot of replay groups that need organizing and managing, you can use tags to keep everything structured. For instance, if you light up the star next to tag 1 in R1, R1 will be added to the tag 1 folder. Simply open the tag 1 folder next to the replay list and you'll find that group there ready to play. If you'd like to play all replay video sources in a group, just tap play all on the right. The device will play all replay clips in order, while the other groups will be locked. While playing, you can pause the current clip or skip ahead by tapping the play button on a later clip in the list. If you don't need to play every clip, you can simply check the ones you want and tap play selected. And if your workflow is simple and you only want to play the latest replay group, just tap the replay icon to the right of the replay button in the top taskbar. This shortcut will instantly play the most recently created replay group. In this update, we've redesigned four key YOLO deck buttons related to replay. Replay, replay, last event, mark in, out, and capture replay. When you press the replay button once, it switches from green to red as exit replay records a new replay action and by default plays that replay group immediately. Pressing the button again stops the replay and returns to the program screen. If you prefer the device not to play the replay automatically after creating a group, you can use the capture replay button. This button generates a replay action without automatically playing the group. Pressing the replay last event button will play all the clips in the most recent replay group sequentially. For custom recording, pressing mark in starts recording a replay clip, switching the button to mark out. Pressing mark out again generates a new custom length replay action without automatically playing it. 
That's a complete overview of the updated replay-related YOLO deck buttons. It's simple and easy to get started with. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insightful content. If you have any questions or would like to know more about YOLO Live, you can contact us via email at contact at yololive.com. If you need to express your needs through pictures or videos, you can also contact us via WhatsApp. Thank you for watching this video.